what is up guys welcome to the channel welcome to another video and racing is back and in full force in today's video i'm heading down to miami to race at brian piccolo park what will not only be my first race of the year but also my first race in the pro one two three field and let me tell you guys this was the hardest crit race i have ever done in the video i made about the number one workout to improve your ftp i concluded by saying how important training specificity is and this video today is the perfect example i will cover who was out there as far as teams or single riders the course since this was my first time there and just the overall race analysis and talk about how i felt during the race what I think I was decent at, but more importantly, what I terribly fell at and need to do a better job next time, which was quite a bit to be honest, so uh, let's get into it. So let's start with the course. I'll put it on the screen so you guys can see it. It was actually a lot more technical than I had anticipated, which made positioning very crucial. And this was probably the biggest mistake for me, but we'll get into it a bit further into the video. By looking at the course, the easiest place to move up you think is the finish line straight, and that is correct except not today because there was a massive headwind so it took an insane amount of watts to move up just a few spots and most likely it was single fire through there anyways which made it very very difficult and it just wasn't worth the energy now let's talk about the teams this was the fourth and last of the asos winter series which has city bikes leading the first and second position coming into the last race with ruben campagnoni a former miami blazer rider that started racing with them this year they had not only the biggest team with around eight riders or so, but also the strongest in my opinion, as they have dominated the general classification in every race so far. Total Cycling was the next biggest team, which I believe they probably had like five or six guys. And there was a couple of guys from Miami Knights. Uh, I think there was one or two guys also from Miami Blazers. So easy to say this was going to be a super spicy race. I had three teammates in the race, which you see on screen here. This is Justin and David and also Jason. Me and David spent most of the race together. Justin, I honestly did not see much. He was probably towards the front putting down a million watts. The word was that City Bikes was going to go hard from the gun because they had so many guys and tried to blow and tried to blow up the field to take the series overall. And they did. Now let's get into the actual race footage. And the first mistake I made was literally in the first pedal stroke. And that was starting the race to come. I really didn't know what to expect, this being my first Pro 1 to 3 race, and the start was nothing like I was used to in the Cat 4 5 field. I actually got to the line nice and early. I was at the front, like, I think I was like second row back or something, which was perfect. But I just lost so many positions because I started way too easy. So, first takeaway you need to be super aggressive to stay forward, or you will pay for it. And I did. The first 20 minutes of this race was like nothing I had ever been part of, guys. It was full gas, single file, over 28 miles an hour average on this course, which is crazy because how technical it is. This is when I really started to pay for that horrible positioning. It's easy to think that being at the back of the race is better because you're uh, more sheltered, but it's absolutely not. It's so much harder. Every time the acceleration coming from the finish line straight got to the back of the group where I was, I had to do a million watts just to stay on the wheels. And this is when I started to notice um, this was something I just didn't have on the day. These 20 minutes were definitely a shock to the system. I have done many races coming off of recovery weeks before, and I never really felt great. It's like the legs forget what going hard feels like. I was doing so many watts just to stay on the wheels. So I quickly realized and uh, had to tell myself, all right, we do not have that extra little bit on top end today uh, to do these super hard anaerobic neuromuscular efforts. This course was so short, each lap was around one minute and the race was 80 minutes. So that means we probably did around 75 laps, which means every single minute you have to do a massive 500 watt effort. So adapting to that and realizing I just didn't have that extra kick today was something that I did right. It was expected to feel this way though because since mid-October I haven't done any top end work. For the past five months all I've done has been like long zone two rides and now in the past four weeks a bit of sweet spot and a um, few over under sessions. I quickly realized that if I wanted to survive this race, which was my number one goal to be honest, I would really have to measure my efforts and stick to what I felt good at, which was just that sustained power and keep it as smooth as possible. So sometimes I'll have to let the wheel go a bit and rather than just trying to get out of the saddle and sprint lap after lap, even if that means I was losing some position. 
I knew I was gonna be able to make them up in the corners. Guys, it was crazy how many people blew up right in front of me because they were just sprinting out of the saddle to not get dropped. I never felt I was gonna get dropped. I knew I was gonna be able to get back to the group in the corners and I just had to stick what I felt good at, which was those sustained efforts. Which brings me to why you need to train like you race. Training specificity is so important. If your A events are crits, then you need to really work on those stop end zones and tune up the engine to be able to repeat those and be able to follow attacks, um, attack yourself or just follow moves. For me this year, the plans are a bit different and as some of you guys might already know, I'm gonna be racing the unbound 200 miles and also SBT gravel. So for me, volume and sustained power and just being able to keep producing power after a lot of KJs is more important. Now, does that mean I don't wanna do good at crits? Of course not. I always wanna do the best I'm capable of, but you need to base your training on what your goal event is. And unfortunately this year, that goal for me is the absolute opposite of what the hard, high power efforts required for crits. So even if it means I won't be the best at crits this year, but I'll crush unbound, then that is absolutely fine with me. As I race more, I'm sure that the effort will get better because I will just keep doing crits no matter what. Like I'm, I'm not gonna just stop doing crits because I'm racing unbound. So halfway through the race, I started to feel a lot better and I settled in and even sent a flyer and bridged to a solo group off the road, but unfortunately we ended up getting caught a bit later. So that uh, pretty much went nowhere. I also forgot to mention, but this is also the longest crit I ever done. Four or five crits are normally, I don't know, around 45, 50 minutes. This one was 80 minutes, so an hour and 20 minutes. That is the longest crit that I've ever done and at a way higher intensity than what you would get in a four or five field. I honestly enjoyed that because I feel the longer the event goes on, the better I feel. I was feeling so much better towards the end of the race. I actually thought about sending a flyer with like five, 10 minutes to go because I wasn't on the general classification. So maybe they all just um, hesitate and, and I'll just go as hard as I could even if that man just blowing up and not finishing the race because I, I honestly wasn't feeling that bad. I, like I said, I felt comfortable with those sustained efforts. I just didn't have the little extra on the top end. I tried so hard guys to move up, but it was I was never able to get close enough to the front before the finish line straight. The course is so technical and hard to move up through the corners. Definitely um, something I will need to do a, a better job of is just positioning. And I know that's gonna come uh, as I race more with these guys and as I get more experience under my belt. There's a lot required to race at this level, guys, when the competition is so strong. And it's not only power, but a lot of skills, intimidation. A rider that is up front in a race does not mean he is necessarily stronger. It's he, because he can probably handle his bike a lot better and can stay up there without wasting a lot of energy compared to me having to surge 75 times uh, during the race because I'm all the way on the back. So power does not win races, speed does. This was definitely eye-opening and gives me a lot of motivation to keep training and be able to get up front and actually get to race these guys. Once the lead out train started, I was once again in horrible positioning at the back and so many people started to blow up and let the wheels go. I found myself chasing back to get in the group and this right here, let's go up the wheel and instead of going wide and leaving the race line open, he closes me up and this was pretty much the end of my race. I had to hit the brakes and I was never able to get back in, uh, into the group, this being the last lap. But I still kept on the power and finished my first Pro 1 to 3 race, which is a lot more than most people <laughs> that started. There was over 20 DNFs in this race, guys, which is crazy. That is going to be it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know that race breakdowns are not the most entertaining videos to watch, but I promise you I tried my hardest to make it enjoyable for you guys. If you're watching this video a few days after it came out, that means I'm racing out at Swamp Classic, which is a stage race. I'm racing a uh, road race on Saturday, a time trial that same afternoon with a crit on Sunday. So if you can go down in the comments and uh, wish me and the team some good luck, that would be really, really appreciated. Because it takes so much time to get these videos ready, like get it from the camera, put it onto the computer, um, export it, then put the power overlay on, export it again. It takes a lot of time that I don't want to waste the race long footage. So I'm thinking about making a separate channel where I'm going to post all my un, uh, unedited race footage rather than just the little clips that I put throughout the video. So if that is something that you guys will enjoy, then let me know. And I'll let you guys know as soon as I create the channel and upload the videos there. And with that, I'll catch you guys on the next video.